may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You are greeted in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome, welcome, I welcome you all to today's service. I welcome those who are watching us through the media. We still love you very much. Just want to put it to you that the uh, next week we are going back to the full programs of the church. Full program of the church. So we are saying those who don't have any issues, comorbidities, those who don't fall under the, the list of people who cannot be in, in people, the old people, if you don't have those things, be at church. Let's live the live streaming for those who, who can't genuinely come to church. Hallelujah. There is greatness in fellowship. Hallelujah. Today's word, we are continuing with righteousness. Uh, today's word, we are talking about the, the gift of righteousness. Hallelujah. How I many of you still remember what righteousness is? How I many of you still remember what righteousness is? Okay, let me, let me just... Ref, uh, remind you a bit but if I do that can we pray Father you are awesome you are glorious you are wonderful I thank you mighty God that you are here you are in our midst Father as you continue to teach us about righteousness Father let this word never come back to you void let this word accomplish that which you purpose to accomplish and prosper in the things that you send it to. Father God, I declare and decree that, Father, this day, I continue to speak with the tongue of the learned. The word of God, the word in season. Father, synchronize me with your now word, the word that you have prepared for the hearers on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I cannot hear you. Amen. Hallelujah. What is righteousness? Righteousness is the ability. I'm just going to give you part of the ability to stand before God without sense of shame, guilt, or condemnation. Amen. The ability to stand God, the ability to stand before God without shame guilt or condemnation. You are standing before God as if you have never sinned. Amen? You are standing before God as if you don't have any history. That is righteousness. So when you stand before God, when you pray outside the righteousness of Christ, you pray through your self-righteousness. And your self-righteousness has the ability to remind you of the mistakes you committed yesterday. Amen. But as you stand before God using the righteousness of, of Christ, it is not you who is praying. It is Jesus who is praying. It is the blood of the Lamb that is praying. Because God sees you through the eyes of his son. Amen. Whatever that Jesus did on the cross is your portion. Hallelujah. So therefore, that's what I'm saying. Righteousness is important to understand righteousness. People who don't understand righteousness always revert back to religion. You know, religion makes people to keep the laws we revert back to the law not knowing that we are we are now religious people hallelujah so i want you to open your hearts open your spirit man to receive today's word hallelujah the gift of righteousness let us first define a gift what is a gift 
What is a gift? Do you work for a gift? No. Do you work for a gift? You don't, you, you don't work for a gift, ne? What do you, you... Do you demand a gift? You don't demand a gift, ne? What do you do? You, it just comes to you, ne? You expect it and it comes. For example, if it's your birthday, what do you expect from those who love you? A gift. But you don't work for it. You don't go to a place and say, I'm here to work. I'm working for my gift. No, you don't do that. So, once you work, it becomes what? Wages. You understand? So, what is a gift? A gift is an is a item given to someone without the expectation of payment or anything in return. That is a gift. It's an item given to someone without an expectation or anything in return. So what do we mean by the gift of righteousness? The gift of righteousness is, is something that you did not work for. You did not toil for that gift. It happened because somebody went out, went out their way. You know, when you are going to buy a gift, especially if you know the person that you are buying the gift to, sometimes you might walk the whole mall or the, the whole shopping center without finding the right thing. Because you know the person that you are buying. So you work to get a gift. By the time you get it, you wrap it, you make it presentable. So now let's talk about the wages. What, what are the wages? You work, you work for your wages. You earn your wages. That's why the Bible says, for the wages of sin is what? Is what? Is death. And the gift of righteousness is what? Is life. So I want you to put those two concepts in your mind. Those two definitions. The gift and wages. So the gift of righteousness. You did not work for it. It was decided in heaven. On your behalf. Because human beings were busy working for sin. The wages of sin. So on, this, on the other side of sin, you worked. For you to sin, you did what? You work. But for the righteousness, you, don't do, you do what? You don't toil. So this is where we miss it big time as children of God. We don't know who we are in Christ. We want to work in prayer. That's the reason why many people don't have a good prayer life because they associate prayer with what? With work. Whereas the Bible says that the fervent prayer of a righteous man, what? Avails much. Who is the righteous man? The one who acknowledges what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Hallelujah. Can you go straight to the word? Let us go straight to Romans 5.17. Romans 5.17. Romans 5.17. What does it say? For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and was and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. May God bless his word. I, I, want, I want you to, to read this, this verse slowly. And put yourself there. Say, for if by one man offense, death reigned through the one. I want us to understand how does death reign? How does death reign? Death reign, when death reign, 
We are not talking about people dying left, right, and center. We are talking about things not working the way they should. Your, your finances don't have life. Lifeless finances. Your prayer is lifeless. Your church attendance, lifeless. Your giving, lifeless. And your career, lifeless. There are no prospects of promotion. That is when death is reigning. I, I want you to understand that. Don't, don't look at death for physical death because the, the biggest deception of Satan, whenever we talk about death, people see a coffin. They don't see death around them. There's, as long as there's no coffin next to me, and as long as there is no, uh, uh, what, a grave, there is no death. No, we're not talking about that. When the Bible said death reign, everything that takes life away from everything that concerns you is death. So death has the ability to steal life. The first thing that death stole, I, 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 I want you to see this. When Adam and, and Eve sinned, what was the first thing that they did? Did they commit suicide? No. Was their, was their graves dug immediately? No. What was stolen by death? The right to stand before God. Hallelujah. What was stolen by death? The right to stand what? Before God. Why did and that right was replaced by what? Fear. Adam and Eve, where are you? We were afraid that we were naked. And fear because of what? The glory has lifted Ichabod from them. So when death reigns, what people lose first is the right to stand before God. You lose your righteousness. That's why I said righteousness is the ability to stand God before God as if you have never what? Sinned. As if you are not guilty and as if you are not living under condemnation. That is righteousness. I'm going to spend time describing it because I want you to understand this gift that we have. So when, Eve, when Adam and Eve lost the right to stand before God, they lost another right to live in the Garden of Eden. That was when death was reigning. Meaning they, they lost the right for God's provision. So many people don't believe that God can provide for them. And we don't, we don't know that that is when death reigns. That is when death is reigning. That is the rulership of death, if I can put it in plain English. Adam and Eve were chased away from what? From the garden. They lost the right for what? For free provision. And there is a myth there is a biggest lie that has been going around for years that if it was in for Eve, people would just be woke, waking up and find food all around them and just eating without waking. That is a lie. The Bible said God gave Adam the garden to tend it. What does that mean? It means that to what? To work. But he was his waking under the grace. Meaning that everything that he touches prospers. Are we together? So when righteousness is not understood, we toil. What do we do? We toil. You find that you are waking. You wake up 4 o'clock in the morning. You sleep 10 o'clock at night. But you got nothing to show for it. That is when death is reigning. Are we together? So the gift of righteousness. Why did they give? So having explained to you what 
what, what death has brought. Now, do you understand what the gift of righteousness has brought to you? What does the gift of righteousness brought back to you? One, death has no power over everything that concerns you. R write, write this one down. Well, I, I've already started preaching. <laughs> I've already started. You, you, I, I, if ever you didn't take the notes, I, w I will advise you to go back to the YouTube and, and, and take the notes. Hallelujah. So, what does the gift of righteousness provide for you? Death came through what? Sin. And through righteousness, what was brought? Life. So now, let us look at the opposite of everything that we have said. Righteousness. When Jesus died on the cross... His blood cleansed you. Are we together? As we cleanse and he, say Jesus died my death. Jesus died my death. That I might be the righteousness of God in him. When he's in him, who? Jesus Christ. So when Jesus died, what, what, what did he die for? He died so that the Death that you were supposed to die through sin. Am, am I referring to physical death? No. That the death that was supposed to reign in your life through sin might stop. Meaning, no more toiling. You have received back the right to go before God and talk to him as your father and you have the right to expect God to provide for you, to protect you, to promote you, to increase you and to give life to everything that you do. When you study, when you are studying at school, what does life do? The Holy Spirit reminds you of what you, have, what you have studied. But when you are operating under the ministry of death, what happens? Everything that you have studied dies in your mind. You can't remember a thing. So, are, are we together, church? Are we together about righteousness, the gift of righteousness? And also, Garden of Eden. The garden that Adam and Eve were given to tend. Who is the last Adam? Jesus Christ. So, you have been given an extended garden. The whole world is your garden of Eden. That's something that people don't understand about righteousness. The whole world is your garden of Eden. So, you are supposed to prosper wherever you are. Am I talking to someone? You, you are supposed to do what? To prosper wherever you are. It doesn't matter. Even if you are a welder, you must prosper through welding. If you are a bricklayer, you must prosper through bricklaying. If you are if you, if you are a cleaner, you must prosper through cleaning. You don't prosper by the salary you earn. You prosper by the gift of righteousness. The grace that is upon your life. What does the gift of righteousness provide for you? The gift of righteousness tells you that whatever that you have in your hand, if it's not enough for provision, it's a seed. And you know that because you have the right standing with God, when you sow that seed, God says, give it shall be given back together. A good measure, pressed, shaken together. Men shall give unto, bosom, unto your bosom. What does that mean? Even that when you give, you are opening the doors of righteousness. Where wherever you go, you get given. You receive things. You are favored. Do you understand righteousness now? Hallelujah. 
So you are no longer afraid to be in the presence of God. You are no longer bent to be in the Garden of Eden. Because the last Eden, when he came, he undid everything that the first Adam did. So having said that, let us read Romans 5.17 again and see if our understanding is clear. Can you read it again? Say, for by one man's by one man offense, death reigned through the one. Much more those who received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one who Christ Jesus. So there are people who are living dual life. They believe more in the Adamic nature than Jesus Christ. What do I mean by that? There are people who are firmly entrenched on their generational iniquities. They believe that there will never be anything in life because no one in their family line has ever been somebody. That is the Adamic nature. The Bible says, much more those who have received abundance of grace. What is grace? Grace empowers you to be able to do those. It's unmerited favor. You are able to do those things that under normal circumstances, your bloodline doesn't allow you to. Are we together? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Where does your strength come from? Your strength is positional. It's because of where you stand. You have the right standing. You have the right to stand before God, to, to, to be strengthened, to be given all power to achieve what you want. Hallelujah. I think this is the longest introduction I've ever had in my teaching life. Hallelujah. Are we together? Now, let us talk about your health. When death, when sin reigned, death came. When Adam and Eve were created, there was no sickness. That's the reason why even if after Adam and Eve sinned, there is no way mentioned in the Bible that they got sick. They never got sick. Even after they fall, sin was far away from them. And sickness was far away from them. Why? They were still, they were still residues of the glory of God. They could not get sick. Sickness came as death continued to reign and they continued to and, and, and people continued to live in death and then Satan became creative as he had been creative now to create another sickness. That's the reason why people are wearing masks. So these, these are the results of death. But we are the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. We stand in Christ. That's the reason why even if sickness can come to your body, it does not have power over your life. Why? The lordship of Satan over your life has been demolished. Hallelujah. Do you understand? Sick, sickness can only entrench itself in your body when the lordship of Satan over your body is entrenched through wrong believing. There is right believing and what? Wrong believing. One of the aspects of wrong believing is that I am sick because God is punishing me. How many of you punish your children by giving them poison to drink when they are wrong? 
And you say, okay, my child, uh, take uh, this one teaspoon a day of poison. It won't kill you because you are naughty. You will be sick for six weeks. For six weeks. After that, you will miss school. And then don't worry. They you will go and explain at school that you are sick because you have been naughty. Is that how we treat our children? No, we, we don't do that. So, because of the misunderstanding of our position that has been given to us by the gift of righteousness, we believe that sickness is still partly our portion. Because if there is no sickness, pastors won't be able to show off their power by healing people. It is not true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say I've got the right to stand before God sickness free or free of any sickness. Say my gift of righteousness has given me the gift of life and life in abundance. That's the reason why the Bible said, you, you, you shall lay your hands on the sick and they shall do what? Recover. Why are the sick recovering? Because of your position. Because of where you are. Right standing with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't hear your amen. Hallelujah. Do you think your amen is enough? You know, one, one of the things that is um, making people not to believe the gift of righteousness is our failure to understand the word being born again. I am born again. But what does that mean? We need to go back to Genesis and check what does being born again mean before you can understand your salvation. The Bible says God Adam created Adam and Eve in the spirit that Genesis 1, 27, 28. Genesis 2, 7 says, he formed them. After he formed them, he took clay that the spirit man, the spirit man was righteous. I want you to understand why he's born again. The spirit man, your spirit man has been righteous before God since then. God formed them. They were clay. I can see, not, not them, Adam and Eve, but the Bible says both of them Okay, it's fine. Let me not confuse myself. Let us focus on this. So I can see Adam lying on the floor, lifeless, being newly formed from the clay. He was a spirit without a body. Now he's given hands, feet, and all that. And the Bible said, and then God breathed in him the breath of what? Of life. And he became what? A living being. Hallelujah. And after he became the living, that when Adam was what? Was born. He was born of what? Of the spirit of God. Because of that spirit that was breathed in him, Adam did not have a problem to go and appear before God. Because he had God in him. The very same godliness, the very same spirit that made God who, who, God who he is was breath in him. Do you, understand, do, do, do you understand where you are right now, church? Hallelujah. Can you stand up a bit? Do you understand where we are? Everybody stand up. I know what's happening. Do you understand where we are? God breathed in Adam. The breath of life. And then Adam was born. Remember, 
Adam was just clay on the floor, waiting for the image of God to come to the clay. Because God says, let us make men according to our image and our likeness. And then when God breathed on him after formation, the Bible says he became what? A living being. Then he was born of God. Hallelujah. He was born of what? Of God. Because of him being born of God, he did not find it wrong to appear before God now and again. Because he knew that he has what? He has the right standing before God. He has the right to appear before God. Because why? The spirit that was breathed in him is the spirit of God himself. So what does that make Adam? A son of God. It made him what? A son of God. So I want you to understand the concept of salvation. If you understand the concept of salvation, you understand righteousness. Because of that, because of the spirit of God that was breathed in him, whenever Adam heard the voice of God, he will say, Daddy, and run to God. Hallelujah. He will say what? Daddy, and do what? And run to God. And, and what? Have fellowship with God. And God will tell him, now that you are in the garden of Eden, son, this is how you are going to tend your garden. Hallelujah. So now, let us go to salvation. To be born again. What is to be born again? The Bible says, if we confess with our mother, the Lord, is, can you go to Romans? Romans, Romans 10. Romans 10. You're not going to sit down now. I know what I'm doing. I'm helping you a lot. Romans 10.9 That if you confess with your mouth that the, and the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. What are you, say, what are you being saved from? It's, it's, it's important to understand that. What are, you, what are you being saved from? From the power of sin and death. What does the power of sin does? does? It takes your right standing away from you. You can't appear before God. But when you are saved from the power of sin and death, what happened? You have the full standing. You have the full right to appear before God. That is salvation. Now, let us go to 1 John 5, 4. 1 John 5, 4. What does he say? First John 5, 4. Are we not having screens today? First John 5, 4. What, 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 what does he say? For whatever is born of what? Overcomes what? And this is the victory that has overcome the world. What is it? Our faith. So, whatever that is born of God overcomes what? What is the world? We are not talking about overcoming America, Angola. No, no, that is not the world. What the Bible is referring to the systems of the world that were created to hinder you from progressing. Are, are we together? Now, I want you to understand sal sal salvation. So, the Bible is talking about the, the whatever that is born of God overcomes the world. So, let us look at how Adam was created. God breathed the breath of life in him. He became a living being. And now, we are born of God through what? Through faith. When you receive faith, when you have faith, why do you receive? The Holy Spirit. Why do we become again the children of God? Why do we receive the right to appear before him? Are we together? That is salvation. If you, under, if you want to understand salvation, understand creation. Are we together? Say, I'm born of God. Say, inside of me, I'm filled with the power and the fullness 
of God through Christ Jesus. That is, the, that is who you are. That is, that, is what is the, that is the meaning of salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when I say people have got dual citizenship, sometimes people are walk, walks around with so much confidence. You know, like any demon that can come in the name of Jesus or cast away, you make a mistake and sin. The next thing, that confidence is gone. You feel that you are in the mercy of demons. No! A big no. Can I tell you why? Let us go to uh, John chapter 5. I'll tell, I'll tell you why I'm saying no. You, you don't understand righteousness. You, you, know, you, you will be the most successful Christian ever. No, 1 John chapter 1, verse 19. Verse 9. First John, it's 1 first John, first John chapter 1, verse 19. 1 John chapter 1, verse 19. Yeah, 1 John, not John chapter 1. Verse 9. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from what? From all what? Unrighteousness. What is unrighteousness? Our, deny, our denied ability to stand before him. So, whenever... Do you, do, you understand, do, do you understand what I mean now? So, the fact that you have made a mistake, you have sinned, doesn't make you a sinner. Sinners are those who have, who have been accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. So, your gift of righteousness doesn't get interrupted. It only gets interrupted if you persist to sin and not confess your sins. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. So, God doesn't give gifts and take them away. It's not like that. People look at the book of Job. I hear, I hear that scripture as a lot in funerals. That is a gross misinterpretation of the scripture. Because people don't understand the context behind. Hallelujah. We, we, we don't, we, nowadays we don't talk about God gave, God take. No. We talk about the will of God. In the will of God, there is the perfect will of God. There is a permissive will of God and, and other wills. That one will teach you some other time. Hallelujah. You may be seated again. Hallelujah. Do you know why I made you to stand up? I wanted you to understand being born again. Because some of you are going to miss it. Because you were busy watching Kaiser Chiefs yesterday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say I've got my right to appear before God. He say, and that right cannot be taken away from me. Say, I will always be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Let us go again to Corinthians 5, uh, 5.21. I think every day we have been touching this scripture. We're going to look at it again. But let us talk, let, let, let us start with uh, 2 Corinthians Second Corinthians 5.17. Uh, I want to address something before, before we close. Oh, time flies. No, that's not fair. I want to address something before we close. Mr. Twist is looking at me. <laughs> You know, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying this teaching. Eh? Because, you know, eyes are being opened. Hallelujah. S some of you, uh, your blessings were not afraid to come to you because you don't deserve them. They were afraid of your, your, your self-condemnation. The way you have judged yourself. You said you don't deserve. 
Yes. Now that you know that nothing can separate you from the love of God. You deserve everything that God has in store for you. What are we reading? No. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. What, what, what does he say? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I want you to, to look at the key ways in this, in this verse. You might not know it, but today you will know it differently. The Bible said, if, as if anyone is where? In Christ. Keyword number one. Underline, in Christ. Not, not if it's anyway in good behavior. Hallelujah. Not, not, not if it's anyway is a friend of a prophet. Not if, not if anyone, anyone, no, 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 no. It has nothing to do with your works. It has everything to do with whose works? Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. That's what the Bible said. If anyone is in Christ, so your responsibility is to stay where? Is, is to stay where? In Christ. That, I, want, you know, I want you to understand your salvation afresh today. Your responsibility is to stay in Christ through the meditation of the word. Who is the word? The word is Christ. The Bible said, if anyone is in Christ, he's a what? He's a new creation. What is a new creation? You are no longer the old person. And that is not referring to your body. If you were saved being light skin, you will remain light skin. If you are saved being dark skin, you remain dark skin. Nothing, nothing of your physical senses, uh, appearance is going to change. It is the inner work. It is the spirit. I want you, uh, listen to me carefully. That, that spirit that God blew into Adam and Adam became a living being. That very same spirit has renewed the spirit man that is in you that was tainted by sin and death. Are we together? So, when that, when the Bible says when you are a new creation, it is not referring to your physical appearance. Many of us are working in salvation through feelings. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like, I don't feel like. How can the soul rule over the spirit man who is the image of Christ? Because your soul is not the image of Christ. Can I, tell, can I say something about your soul? Your soul is where your soul was created to give you the ability to relate with your physical world. Your emotions are important in worshiping, but the primary function of the soul is to give you the ability to relate with the physical world. So the new creation is the spirit man. Check this. The Bible said, all things have passed away. What are all things? All things has passed away. Behold, check here. There are, there are two key words here. The other one is old Old, old. And the second word is, Behold, and all things have become what? New. What is new in you? If you were rejected, if, if doors were closed before you, when you were young, when you were in the world, by the reason of salvation, you start walking in the favor of God because all things have become new. Why you are like Christ. Luke 2.52 said, Jesus Christ grew in stature and what? And wisdom and with what? With favor from what? From God and what? And man. So if ever you were working salvation, the 
gift of righteousness gives you the ability to walk in the newness of life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So, get rid of those feelings. I'm feeling, I'm feeling like this. You know, you know, you know today, I don't feel like, I don't feel like, you know, I don't feel like reading the Bible. You know, is there a good movie? Is, do, do we have a good movie in the house? I, no. That, because you walk by feelings, it, those are the results of sin consciousness. We spoke about the tag of sin. Hallelujah. Who, those who walk by feelings is the result of what? Sin consciousness. Can I put it to you today? Everything that belongs to you is coming to you. Not to you straight. It's coming to the Jesus Christ in whom, in whom and whose you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you understand the gift of righteousness today? I spent more time explaining salvation. I didn't go deep. There are a lot of things that we... Okay. Time will forgive me. If it has to stop, it will stop. I must continue. The reality of you understanding the gift of righteousness gives you confidence in prayer. Write that one down. It gives you what? Confidence. You approach God in confidence. We, 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 said, we, said, we said this last week. Because there are two weapons of Satan that, that he has released to make you accuse yourself. One is deception and accusation. Those are two. One is deception, two accusation. Deception. What is deception? Let us read Isaiah 54, verse 17. I want you to show something. Isaiah 54, verse 17. You know the scripture? You, you, you quote it a lot, especially when you are angry. Hans even, plus no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yeah. It, it has prospered a weapon, yeah. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Who condemns? Say me. Did the, did the Bible, did God say he shall condemn on your behalf? Yeah? No. Who condemns? You, ne? This is the heritage of what? Of the servants of the Lord. And they are what? And their righteousness is, for, is from who? It's from where? It's from who? Check, check. And their righteousness from where? It's from me. Who says who? God. But I want you to check the weapon. The first weapon is self-deception. Whenever you feel like you can't do anything, do you hear the voice of somebody else or your voice speaking to you? The voice that speaks to you inside of you, whom does it sound like? It's Tavisio's voice, ne? Eh? And that voice is saying, but you can't do this. You can't achieve this. There is no way that you will win. And do you know why you believe that voice? Because it's the sound of your voice. You, it, that, that is one of the biggest form of deception that, 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 that the enemy has released. When you hear your own voice saying, you're not worthy. We are guy. You don't even fit in. Young people, when I, don't go to vets. Go, go to other universities. Vets is for the rich kids. They will be wearing Louis Vuitton. And you are going there with your RT. And that voice makes you lose what? Self-confidence, self-esteem, self-everything. That is, that is the number one weapon of Satan. That is the number one weapon of Satan. The moment you believe that voice, 
The one that God said, no weapon formed against you shall proper. And every tongue that raises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Who, who's supposed to condemn the voice in you? You. You should, you should immediately say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I deserve everything that the, my heavenly father has provided for me. Why? For my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. In who? In Christ Jesus. Who gave you the gift of righteousness? Christ Jesus. So everything comes through who? Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, I've got one of my friends. God gave him a car. Free of charge, a big car. And it, it had some scratches. And God is fixing it for him. Somebody said, bring it. I'll fix it for you. For free. Everything that is happening in that car is for free. Why? God has the ability to take care of your needs. Change the way you feel about yourself. Because it's not about feelings. It's about what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. He has given you the gift of righteousness. You have the right standing with him. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. It doesn't matter what you did this morning. All that you need to do is to confess your sins. He said he is quick and just to cleanse you from all forms of unrighteousness. Why? Everything that makes you to repel the presence of God is unrighteousness. There are some people who can't, who can't even go to church because they believe that because of what they did, they are not worthy to come and sit in the chair of the church. No, that's a lie from, that's a lie from hell. As, as long as you have confessed your sins, you are forgiven. You have every right standing to come before God just like Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It is your gift of righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. What are the two weapons of Satan? Say accusation and deception. First John 5, 8. In closing now. It's for the first time I say in closing. Ne? It's for the first time. Okay, thank you. I know, I know Tabiso is counting. First John 5, 8. No, 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 no. First John 3, 8. Sorry. I, I just like 5 John. I just like 5 8. He said, He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. But I want us to look at this second part. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he should destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Say the works of the devil are destroyed in my life. I have the right to, to appear before God in prayer, in supplication, in declaration, in praise, in worship. Say I am born of God. And my Bible tells me whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Say, I overcome the world and these systems and everything designed to hinder my progress in life. If you believe that, praise him. If you believe that, praise him. If you believe him, stand up, stand up. You just begin to give him worship. Let us rise up. If you believe, if you believe what you've just confessed, I want you to open your mouth and just to give to give him praise and just to make declaration that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have received the I have received the gift of righteousness 
not through my works, but through the works of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ himself worked to give me the gift of righteousness. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, talk to him, talk to him. Riva siati karaboshia. Rembo so riva shiende rebosia. Siandi mbo stari wa karabeshie. Zendi mbo robo sitareshia. Lord, we thank you for the gift of righteousness. We thank you for this word. We thank you, Father, for this word. We thank you, Father, this word shall never come back to you void. Heavenly Father, we thank you that there is therefore now no condemnation to us in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death has no power over our lives. We thank you, mighty God, that it is done. We bless you, Daddy. We thank you for this word, this liberating word. We thank you that your word has liberated us from the chains of the lies and deception of Satan and his accusations. For for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that it should destroy the works of the enemy. We thank you, mighty God. We honor you, mighty God. We bless you, Father. We bless you, mighty God. We bless you, mighty God. We honor you, mighty God. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We thank you. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Come on, lift up your hands.